Powered by the Montana Television Network. Montana This Morning continues on Montana's News Leader. President Trump calls a judge's ruling unfair. I'm Laura Podesta. I'll tell you what this ruling means for people trying to seek asylum in the U.S. Words from the former U.S. Attorney General here at Montana State University. That's what college students and beyond got to hear tonight for free. I'm Cody Boyer with the latest from Jeff Sessions' visit. Good morning to you. Welcome to your Tuesday. We are coming right up on 6.30. I'm Missy O'Malley with Chet Lehman and our top story for you here. President Trump made more changes yesterday at the Department of Homeland Security in an effort to revitalize his immigration policies. CBS's Laura Podesta has more on the latest shakeup. A federal judge has blocked the Trump administration's policy of sending asylum seekers back to Mexico to wait out their cases. Last night, President Trump tweeted the ruling is so unfair to the U.S. It's not the first time the court stymied his immigration policies. But this one comes as the president overhauls the Department of Homeland Security to get tougher on immigration. Our country is full. So far, five senior officials have been purged as part of a plan orchestrated by presidential advisor and immigration hardliner Stephen Miller. We're going to do whatever is necessary to build the border wall to stop this ongoing crisis of illegal immigration. Secretary Kirsten Nielsen is the biggest name on the way out. I will continue to support all efforts to address the humanitarian and security crisis on the border. Also gone, the head of the Secret Service, Tex Alice. The president and the White House staff may like to treat hiring and firing in the administration as some kind of reality TV show or parlor game. Daryl West of the think tank, the Brookings Institution, says President Trump is looking ahead to the 2020 election. It's going to be a tough job because the president clearly wants whoever's in that position to be really tough. And that means separating families, communicating uh, policies uh, that a lot of people object to. Customs and Border Protection Commissioner Kevin McAleenan will take over as acting DHS secretary. Laura Podesta, CBS News. Now, in addition to McAleenan, Energy Secretary Rick Perry and former Acting Attorney General Matthew Whitaker could be in the running to replace Nielsen. More to follow. We'll be following, watching that. Yeah, yeah for absolutely. Sure. Pretty wet start to the day, those puddles in the parking lot. <laughs> They small, are growing. Uh, get a boat. Yeah, <laughs> uh, we've had some pretty decent downpours yeah, already this morning. We'll probably see more as we head through the morning and afternoon. Temperatures around the 40 degree mark for most of us. Uh, Often on showers, some mountain snow very likely. It looks like we're going to be dealing with some patchy fog as well. Right now, visibility reports are okay, uh, but there will be some fog in some low lying areas. Rain continues through the day today. We'll probably see some snow by the evening. We'll talk about how much you. You should expect coming up in just a few minutes. Thank you, Matt. Uh, 6.32 now, our top uh, local story this half hour. Gallatin County Sheriff's Office has identified 59-year-old Cynthia Carroll Willis as the Bozeman woman killed in last Thursday's shooting at a mobile home park. 56-year-old William Bailey faces up to 100 years or life in prison for that shooting that happened in the Wagon Wheel Mobile Home Park in Bozeman just after 8 p.m. Thursday. Police say Bailey shot Wills, who was living with him twice as she was trying to return to their mobile home after an argument. Bailey's bail is set at $1 million. And in Gallatin County, one in three women will unfortunately become victims of domestic violence in their lifetime. According to Haven, one in seven men will also experience it. It is a conversation that advocacy and support organizations like Haven and Bozeman and the Gallatin County Sheriff's Office has been focusing on recently. Deputies say there have been two murders in Bozeman within the last three weeks, including last Thursday night when a woman was killed. A man, William Bailey, accused of shooting her in the Wagon Wheel Mobile Home Park. Haven Executive Director Erica Coyle says their efforts continue to try to change the stigma supporting survivors and holding abusers accountable. Coyle adds that Haven advocates spreading the word about domestic violence with more than 100 volunteers annually, with many working as community advocates. While many other services exist with Haven, Coyle says many crimes continue silently, but with help can start with someone as close as a family member. If survivors have a trusted friend or family member they can reach out to for that support, 
we always encourage them to do that because we really want to support them in rebuilding those social networks so that they are able to make the best decision for themselves and their family. Now Haven does have a 24-hour support line that we have on our website. The organization also maintains a shelter for victims, a legal advocacy team to support survivors as they file for orders of protection and education programs. And last night at the City Commission meeting, commissioners were expected to make a big decision regarding affordable housing. However, as MTN's Madeira's Bab saw, without the right paperwork, uh, there won't be a final say. This week, Bozeman commissioners were supposed to vote on whether or not to use about $240,000 for the local Human Resource Development Council for workforce housing. HRDC is asking for the money to be used towards 24 Willow Springs tone homes to be built on the corner of Hoover Way and Sartain Street. The nonprofit is asking for the city to use the workforce housing funds because under city standards, the homes are considered affordable. The vote was supposed to be on this week's agenda, but because the site plan was not finished, it had to be pushed back to a later date. In Bozeman, Madeira's Bab, MTN News. Now, Madeira's tells us currently the city has around three quarters of a million dollars in its workforce housing fund. And state lawmakers will hold a hearing this week at a major reform to Montana's medical marijuana system. MTN's Jonathan Imbarian reports that the bill would dramatically change the way patients receive their medical marijuana. Two years after the Montana legislature passed a bill to overhaul the state's medical marijuana laws, Democratic Senator Tom Jacobson of Great Falls says more changes are needed. I mean, this is all brand new to Montana. We've not really done things to this extent in the past. Uh, we knew there would be some changes that would have to come about. Jacobson is sponsoring Senate Bill 265. It would make a number of changes, including increasing the tax on medical marijuana providers from 2% to 4%. Jacobson says the Montana Department of Public Health and Human Services isn't receiving enough tax revenue to administer the medical marijuana program. Rather than hamstringing the department in, you know, not being able to further implement these rules, we wanted to make sure they had adequate funds to implement the statute. But the biggest change added as an amendment in the Senate would be untethering patients from providers. Currently, patients who do not grow their own marijuana must choose a single provider they will buy marijuana from. Being tied to one provider, though it creates some ease in monitoring, it creates difficulties on the patient's part when they need to get their medical marijuana. Jacobson says removing that restriction would help patients who need medicine but can't get to their approved provider. SB 265 would instead limit each patient to buying five ounces of marijuana a month. Their purchases would be tracked using their medical marijuana card. You scan your card, it says, oh, you've purchased your allotment, you know, for the month, or you've already gotten it from this place, so you can't get multiple. DPHHS leaders say they're already working to determine what steps they would need to take to implement untethering by July 2020 if the bill passes. In Helena, Jonathan Amberian, MTN News. Senate Bill 265 passed the Senate with 36 votes to 14. It will be heard tomorrow morning in the House Taxation Committee. And that committee is not expected to take any immediate action on the bill. We'll keep you updated. Back here in the Gallatin Valley, former United States Attorney General Jeff Sessions made a stop in Bozeman last night. His goal was to talk to young minds about the freedom and speech of conservative ideas that he used during his decades in national politics, including working with President Trump. Now, MTN's Cody Boyer was in the room to hear Sessions' speech and has the latest from the students who filled the room to attend it. That's right. Tickets for this event sold out early. All to see former U.S. Attorney General Jeff Sessions. With things on the agenda tonight, such as his past service as the U.S. Attorney General, as well as the military and beyond, he expects those in the audience, especially the young minds, to take away an important message. Well, it means a lot to us that he would come to the university itself. Seats quickly filled in as Bjornsson Hall's Inspiration Hall, with the audience ranging from old to young. The former U.S. Attorney General quickly stated his case. Don't let anybody put you down. A key topic, the First Amendment, from the freedom of speech on campus to the freedom of religion, citing his upbringing in Selma and leadership in Alabama for students to compare to their own. I believe integrity, hard work, teamwork, 
or the ability to show a certain amount of humility, to have lived with people of all different backgrounds, uh, gives you some advantages that others don't have. Sessions also discuss the average American wealth, along with the importance of an objective legal system. He also joked about his retirement just last November. One of the most important duties of the Attorney General and any other cabinet member, for that matter, is to resign when asked. <laughs> Looking to our state, Sessions talked about Montana Highway Patrol Trooper Wade Palmer, who was shot in the head while on duty back in March and is still recovering. This country owes them a moral obligation to back them up, not to demean them, to respect their work and defend them when they're doing the job as they should. Students and parents of students alike both say the speech was informative. We're very excited to hear about his experience as Attorney General as well as the advice he has for any of the students here at MSU. I don't know too much about him, um, but I'm pretty excited to just see what he has to say about conservative values and all that stuff. I think it's dynamite. I think uh, I've tried to bring my son, but he didn't want to come. So. <laughs> In the end, students hope that his message reaches both sides of the aisle. Many of you are leading now and you will certainly become leaders in the future. In Bozeman, Cody Boyer, MTN News. Now, this was not Jeff Sessions' first visit to Bozeman. He also visited last June when he was still acting as U.S. Attorney General. We got to take a quick break. Thank you for joining us here on your Tuesday morning.